So today we're going to take a look at 5.4. Um, we looked at a little bit of 5.4 yesterday, but we're going to go through a couple things again today um, just to, to simplify a few, a few concepts. All right? So we got two special cases we looked at with inequalities. Okay? Um, does anybody remember um, the two special cases? One of them uses one word, one of them uses another word. Okay then? Yep, we have conjunctions and disjunctions. Okay, so those are the, the two special inequalities we're going to look at. All right, when you see the word conjunction, um, Gage, what, what word does that associate with, conjunction? Yeah, but if you had to sum this up in one word, you think conjunction, what one word do you think of? Ryan? And. And. Okay. And you see conjunction. Okay. It's connected by the word and. All right. So if I gave you guys an example thank you, um, with and, all right, I could say something like, let's try... We are in December, and it's not sunny out. Are both of those true? Nope. Yeah. Yeah, we are in December, and it's not sunny. You guys don't okay. today. What do, you, what do you think? Are both of those statements true? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so with an and, both things have to be true. Okay, that we're going to think of that as like an overlap. Okay, when you think and... Both things have to be true, so it's going to be, when we graph it, like an overlap. Okay, so for a conjunction to be true, that's where both sentences are true. All right, how about um, disjunction? What one word do you think of when you think disjunction, Justin? Or. Yeah, we think or. All right, so that's two sentences connected by the word or. Now, for an or to be true, do you need both of them or just one of them? Of course, you just need one of them, all right? So for a disjunction to be true, you just need at least one sentence to be true. So that's why when we graph disjunctions, it doesn't have to be where they both overlap. It can be one or it can be the other. So in this case, we're just going to graph everything, okay? Conjunctions are picky. All right, like Mr. Rice said, those, those are the snobby, right? Those have to overlap. Disjunctions don't. Disjunctions, you graph everything. All right, so that's the basic difference between a conjunction and a disjunction. All right, somebody remind me again, I think I asked Victor yesterday, how do you pronounce this symbol? All right, the second one is greater than or equal to. Yeah, and there's a key word he said in both. He said or. He said x is less than or equal. Or. Right? The word or. That means it's a disjunction. Right? So anytime we graph something that has this symbol in it, we're really graphing two things. We're graphing where x equals 2, and we put a dot. And then we're graphing where it's less than 2, and we shade with an arrow. Okay, that's the two parts. All right, so these are disjunctions. Okay, so we'll practice. Um, we'll just graph maybe one of the basic disjunctions, and then we'll get into the ones that were on your homework. Okay, a little harder. All right, so this one says 11 minus 3x less than or equal to 26. Okay, less than or equal. So when I'm done... I'm going to graph the equal by filling in a circle, or, and then I'm going to put an arrow. Okay. All right, what would be um, my first step here? Corey? Yeah. All right, Gage, do you agree with what Corey said? Yes. What'd he say? Okay, I was not listening. I'll admit it. All right. I said blue plus apple equals So, Corey. Corey said to add 11 on both sides. If we have a positive 11 and a positive 11, would those cancel? Yes. Or no. no. How would we cancel? I like the idea of 11, but just not adding it. Six, <coughs> yeah. 
subtract it. Okay, so when we subtract it, that's going to cancel. Now, when we subtract, do we flip the sign? No. Right? I see a lot of people make that mistake, but you don't flip it. Okay? Leave it <coughs> just the way it is. Um, what's on the left-hand side now, Kevin? Negative 3x. Yep, negative 3x. And on the right, 26 take away 11 gives me 15. All right, now my last step, and we've got to be careful here. Okay, what's my, what's my last step? Yep. Good, I'm going to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. 3's cancel. Negatives cancel. X is on the left. And somebody tell me what else is going to happen here. Ryan? The sign's going to flip. The sign's going to flip because we divided by a negative. Okay. And Ryan, can you finish that up for me? What's 15 divided by negative 3? Uh, negative 5. Negative 5. Okay, so there's the solve. Okay, some problems on the test tomorrow. Mr. Roy and I, we just redid the test last night, but it's still going to be um, pretty similar, but we shortened it a little bit. Okay, some problems just say solve. If all this said was solve, you're done. Okay, you don't have to graph it. Okay, right? so not every problem on the test tomorrow is a graphing one. Okay, some are just solve. This one, though, you do, you got to graph. All right, let's make our number line. Okay, in general, our suggestion is to put, put the number you get a graph, and then put one number lower, one number higher. Okay, so what's one number that's lower than negative 5? Negative 6. And a number that's higher? Perfect. Okay, that's all you have to do. If the number line is already numbered for you, which a lot of them on the test are, you don't even need to worry about that. Okay? Just use the numbers that are already there. And if we numbered it, you won't have a problem where you go off the number line. Okay? I know some in the homework, you ended up with a number line that wasn't big enough. Anybody remember some of those? You went, you went off it. Okay, that's, that's not going to happen on the test. All right. Um, Sabrina, what kind of circle on negative 5? Yep, closed circle. So that's the first part. We just graphed this. Or we also have to graph that. Okay? We normally don't separate it into two problems like this, but that's what it means. X is greater than or equal to negative 5. What's nice is we have this little symbol we can use that shortens it up for us. Um, so which way do I shade? To the left or to the right? Yeah, we're going to shade to the right. Okay, and you know what? Let me um, use my highlighter. That'll be a little easier so we can see the shading. All right, any questions on that? All right, so I think we had another one like that, but does anybody need me to go through this one? It's pretty much exactly the same as, as that one. Okay? Pretty much the same, same thing. All right, so we'll, um, we'll, we'll skip over this one and let's take a look at disjunction. Okay? This is kind of the quick way I'm going to summarize how you do it. Graph everything. Okay, we had all those cases yesterday whether they're pointing towards each other, away from each other, or pointing the same way. And that works fine as long as the smaller number's on the left and the bigger number's on the right. But for some people, I think it was, it was a lot to remember. Right? So this is the quick way to think of an or. Think or, graph everything. All right? That's it. Graph everything. Don't worry about overlap. When we think and, we'll, we'll worry about overlap. Okay, but with or, just graph it all. All right, so let's try, um, let's go through these and, and see how that works. Um, first part, x is greater than or equal to 5. Who can tell me what kind of circle? Kevin? Closed circle, where do I put it? Positive 5. Positive 5, good. Okay, um, you know what, let's do the other circle first. X is less than 1. Open circle on 1. 
All right, so now I, I, I took care of my circles. Now I'm going to use my highlighter to do my shading. All right, so I got my highlighter. Um, let's start with the closed circle. Which way do I shade? Right. Yep, I'm going to shade to the right. Okay. And for my open circle, I'm going to shade left. And that's it. All I do is graph everything. I'm done. Do I look for overlap here? You think, no. If they overlap, great. If they don't, who cares? With the word or, we don't care about overlap. Okay? That answer is perfect. Okay. Any questions on that one? All right. Let's try this one. Okay, who can tell me what kind of circle on negative one? Open. Okay. If you want to do your arrow now, you can. I just I like to do my circles first. So open circle on negative one. What kind of circle on four? Open. All right. Now I'm gonna use my highlighter and I'm gonna shade. Which way do I shade um, for the open circle on negative one? Yep. I'm gonna shade. To the right. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Which way am I going to shade for my open circle on four? We're going to shade to the right. Okay. And the answer is everything. Okay. Is there overlap here? Do we care about the overlap? No. All right. So if I was graphing this on the test. The answer is everything that's shaded, all of this stuff. They overlap here, who cares? We don't care with an or. Just graph everything, all right? So if you wanted, do I even really need this arrow on the green one? No. No, okay. Really, the graph, the pink one already covers all this for me, all right? So if I just use my highlighter, all right? And this green one, really, this covers the whole thing. That's it. A little bit of overlap, but I don't care. All right? The pink arrow is completely overlapped by the green one. Does everybody see that? And yesterday, we said you graphed the longer one. That's exactly what I've done. Graphed everything. OK, so that was our, that was our second case. And let's look at this one. Okay, what, um, what makes this one a, like an extra step? What do we have to do? Solve it. Yeah, we've got to solve because we've got to get the x by itself. Okay? And we've got to do it on both sides. Um, you will have one or two, no, no more than two, like this on the test. Okay? So who can tell me my first step to get x by itself here? Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Nice. Add five. Do we flip the sign when we add? No. Nope. Negative one plus five is four. And who can give me my last step? Yeah, you want to finish the whole thing, Kevin? Go ahead. Divide by two. Should I flip the sign? No. Nope. Good job. X is less than two. Or, now you could graph that if you want right now. But I, I like to finish doing the algebra first and then I'll do the graphing, okay? Um, somebody else, who can tell me my first step here? Get x by itself. Yep, subtract 8, subtract 8. 3x is greater, what's 29? Take away 8, 21. And my last step to get rid of this 3, I'm going to divide. Do I flip? Nope, x is greater than 7. Okay, 21 divided by 3 is 7. All right. Now, before I even graph it, am I looking for an overlap or do I just graph everything? Graph everything, okay? Who cares about overlap? Just graph it all. Um, Alex, what kind of circle on 2? Open, I like it. What kind of circle on 7? Open again, I like it. All right, I'm going to use my highlighter. And using that, um, 
which way do I shade for my circle on two? About right? Um, left? Yep, I'm going to shade left. Okay, and for my circle on seven, um, Ben, which way do I shade for that? To the right. Perfect. Shade to the right. Okay, I tried to keep the shading out of the circle because that's, um, that's not part of it. The circle should not be shaded in. These are open circles. So I tried to show that. And that's it. Okay, so with an or, just graph it all. And whatever happens, happens. happens. Don't worry about overlap. That's going to come up next. Okay, so any question on the or? Do we have another one? Or I think that was it. Yeah. Does that... Does that help or does that, does that make things worse or about the same? What do you think? Yeah, just, just think of it, graph everything. You don't have to think if they point towards, away, same direction. You know, just graph it all. All right. Conjunction. Right. Two words to sum it up. Graph the overlap. Right? This one's important. Okay, whether they're pointing towards each other, away from each other, same direction, you have to graph where they overlap. What if there's no overlap? No then there's no solution. Okay, so with an, with an and, make sure you look for the overlap. Okay, and I think this is where the highlighter is going to show show the overlap for you um, nicely. Okay, um, Logan, what kind of circle on three? Three. You do a close circle. Yep, closed circle, open circle. And Victor, um, I'm going to use my highlighter. What, um, what direction do I shade from the closed circle on three? three. Yep, I'm going to shade to the right. All right. And again, I'm going to erase some of this because I only want the overlap. And how about, Alex, what direction do I shade from the open circle on eight? To the left. And now, do I just leave it like that, or do I have to focus on just one thing? The overlap. Okay? So I'm going to look where they overlap, and I can see that it's between 3 and 8. Okay, so what I'll do, try to make that look like an open circle. If you can see that. And here. Get rid of that. And we'll make that a filled in circle. I'm not sure if that's maybe easier to see. And that's it. All right, so you've got to look for the overlap. And that's it. Just find the overlap. So if you're doing this on the test, what you might want to do is draw it in your head, or you know, think about it in your head, or draw it above the line. No, you've got the filled in circle, shade right, open circle, shade left. You guys can find the overlap just like I did. You don't need colors to do it. Just look for where both lines are, would be together, okay, where they overlap. All right, let's try. All right, let's, All right, let's try this one, see what happens. Okay, I'll help you guys with the first one. X is greater than 1. Okay, I just move the 5 to the other side. And 3X is greater than how much? When I move that 5 to the other side? 15. 15. Okay, last step. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. So X is greater than 5. So I'm going to graph that, I'm going to graph that, and I'm going to look for the overlap. overlap. Okay, I'm going to look for where they overlap. All right, this one I think is a little easier um, than the last one. So, you got what kind of circle on one? Open. Yep, open. You know, I got my highlighter, so let me do that first, and then I'll go back and put the circle. Um, what kind of circle on five? Open and shade to the shade to the right. 
All right, so let me just put my circles in. Open, open circle on five. All right, where is the overlap? From what number on? From five and on. Okay, if this was an or, I would leave it just like this. I just graph it all. But with an and, I can only graph overlap. And that's it. All right, so everything from five and on is the overlap. All right, and let's try 3C. Okay, this one's already solved for x, so this will be a quick one. And then we'll do our last one um, that we had to kind of go through quickly at the end, um, and then we'll be done. All right, um, what kind of circle on negative 2? Closed. Closed. <laughs> what kind of circle on 3? Open. Open. All right, and which way do I shade? Yeah, you might highlight it. Which way do I shade for um, the closed circle? Yep, we're going to shade left. How about for the open circle? We're going to shade to the right. And now, what's my answer here? Yeah, there's no solution. How come? They don't overlap. If this was an or, that's fine. But since this is an and, there's no solution. So technically, if you have a no solution, once you see that, there's nothing to sketch. Okay? The answer is the overlap. Well, there's no overlap. So technically, this is what the graph looks like. Nothing is shaded. Okay? But sometimes you need to just maybe make the graph, you know, I might draw it above the number line. If I was doing this on a test and not a smart board, I'd say, okay, I got that, I got that. I'd say, oh, there's no overlap. I'm just going to leave the number line blank. Okay? All right, any question on that one? That's a no solution. All right, so notice that can happen with ands. Okay, we get no solution. And then with ors, did we have the whole number line? Nope. We didn't have any that were the whole number line for ors. But what if we did? If you end up shading everything on the whole number line, does anybody remember what that's called? When everything gets shaded in? All real numbers. Yeah, all real numbers. All right. All right, so our last problem basically gave us a quick way to combine two separate inequalities that are conjunctions, that are the word and, into one statement. Okay? So this first part, x is greater than negative 1. That's right there. And the second part, we kind of reuse the x. x is less than 4 is right there. All right, so it kind of gives us a way to take two inequalities that are conjunction and just shorten it. So any time that you see this, you just have to know this is an and. Okay? The word and here is, is hidden. All right? So if they don't write anything, it's always an and. That's what we said yesterday. All right, so let's take a look at... Um, our last one, okay, we'll get x by itself, and then we'll graph it. And I'm going to show you guys why it's a between, okay? Because I said yesterday, just, just go between. But I didn't really get to explain why. All right, so who can tell me my first step here to get x by itself? And if you're confused, just block off one side and think of what you would do to get rid of x, get x by itself, okay? Right? And whatever you do, you got to do it in the middle, the left, and the right. Perfect. Subtract 5, and I'm going to do it on the left and on the right. So that's gone. Now I subtracted. Um, do I flip my signs when I subtract? Nope. Keep that. Keep that. Um, what's negative 3 take away 5? Negative 8. 
2x is left in the middle. And then 9 take away 5 gives me 4. And what would be my last step? To get x by itself. But Justin? Yeah, we're going to divide by 2. two? And where else? Divide 4 by 2 and eight, negative 8 eight divided by 2. Good. All right. Gage, what's uh, negative 8 divided by 2? Negative 4. Okay. And what comes next? Yep. Less than. What's in the middle? Yeah. X is in the middle. Less than or equal to? Uh, two. two. All right. So this is our final answer. Okay. There's no word written here. Is this an and or an or? It's an and. Okay. And if we wanted to write it as an and, okay, let me show you the two pieces. Okay. This is what we didn't get to yesterday. There's the first piece. Negative 4 is less than x. Does everyone see that part? Negative 4 is less than x. Right. And here's the second piece. What's that second piece say? Yeah, x is less than or equal to 2. Now. Which one of these looks a little funny? The one in red or the one in green? The one in red. Yeah, the one in red. That's not the right form. Okay. How do we normally like our letter? On the left, yep. Yeah. And where do we like our number? On the right. And what was it pointing at originally? Negative 4. Pointing at negative 4. Keep it pointing at negative 4. This is what we are graphing. All right. So let's see why it ends up um, get why it ends up being a between. All right. So let's just move this down. All right. Um, well, Callan, what kind of circle on negative four? Open. All right. Um, Gabe, what kind of circle on two? Nice. Closed. All right, and now with my highlighter, uh, Ben, what direction am I going to shade from negative 4? Yeah, I'm going to shade to the right. So far, so good. And Corey, from 2, which direction do I shade? Perfect. To the left. And now where's the overlap? Exactly in between. That's why this is an in between. That's where the overlap is. Right. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that part. Get rid of that part. And just clean that up a little so you guys can see it. Closed. Technically that should not be shaped. Open. And that's it. So any questions on that? All right. So the homework tonight is um, the worksheet on 5-4. Uh, and then the test on Friday is going to be 5-1, 5-2, and 5-4. And if you guys already did this homework assignment from last night, OK, you're all set. Don't worry about it. The only other homework is going to be the review study guide. Right. So how many people already did 5-4? OK, so if you did that, you're good. Can you use the review study guide on the test? Yes. Right. So you can use that on the test.